Hello and welcome to Stellaris 1.5 Banks Update. My name is Rudy and today we're briefly going to look through some of the changes in race creation, race customization, and the like. So let's jump right in. I'll be doing a Stellaris Let's Play series in the near future, so be on the lookout for that. So some of the biggest changes that have occurred, and we'll jump right to it, are with the government and ethics. So we're going to take a look at this, and then we're going to look at the different racial traits that you can pick, which I don't think much has changed there. But here, there has been the addition of the authoritarian ethic system in contrast to the egalitarian. This is replacing communalism and individualism. Authoritarian allows caste system species policy, cannot use democratic government forms, and can displace aliens. So this has some good benefits for resettlement costs and slave unrest. And for egalitarians, we get faction influence gain plus 15%, minus 10% consumer good costs. So that is another major change in 1.5 here, is the addition of consumer goods that your empire will consume, that your population consumes. As you expand your empire, the consumer good cost gets greater and greater. It is meant to sort of act as a check for large empires to help slow them down, or so I've been led to believe. And of course, the great, the great big thing, Hive Minded. You can spend all three of your three ethic points for Hive Minded, which causes you to have to use the Hive Mind authority. Rulers are immortal. Our pops are not affected by happiness and will not join factions. Factions, of course, being another new thing added here that I'm really looking forward to seeing how they all work out. Your population will form. Well, I guess factions were in the previous versions, but not like this. And, well, I guess we won't be talking too much about factions in this brief video. So hive-minded... Hive-minded pops cannot survive in non-hive-mind empires. H how would a hive-minded population leave a hive-mind empire anyway? <laughs> it's like, just because you own a planet doesn't mean that the the population unit's gonna suddenly be severed from their hive. Or maybe they are. Maybe that's why they're slowly dying away. And non-hive-minded non pops cannot survive in hive-mind empires. Which, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, uh, the hive mind can just keep these alien population units under control the same way any other empire would, but so be it. We cannot have AI, another thing that doesn't make too much sense, and we cannot follow psionic or synthetic ascension paths. Well, that's interesting. And of course, now we have these civics here, which we can choose to augment our ethics. So, I mean, I guess there was really no corollary to civics in the previous version. So now, as the hive mind is selected, these are all unique civics for the hive mind, such as subspace efapsy. What? Gives us a plus 15% naval capacity. Natural neural network research speed, plus 5%. So there's some pretty nice things in here. Pooled knowledge for additional leader skill levels and additional leader pool size. So if leaders are immortal, I'm not sure how important this would be, because all your leaders will quickly rise up to level 5 and then you'll have them. Rulers are immortal. Maybe they're referring only to the ruler of the empire and not the individual rulers that you recruit. So there's quite a few things here. Divided attention gives you plus 2 core sector systems. Now in 1.5 I believe your default core systems are only 3, but there are many more ways to increase that now. And of course, divided attention is one of those. Very nice stuff. And I do know there is a way to convert other alien populations into your hive mind. It's one of the ascension perks that you get along the way. Oh yeah, it says it right here. Can can genetically modify species to become hive minded if biological ascension path is completed. Now that sounds pretty awesome if you ask me. So, th I mean, that's really the big change. Some of the other changes here, it seems like materialists are the only ones that can use full AI rights policy, for instance. Spiritualism, it seems like it's specifically calling out that they can research psionics technology, so... And they must have outlawed AI. Right, so now if you're not hive-minded, of course you have all these other civics, and one thing that really stood out to me was fanatic purifiers. So originally, fanatic purifiers was a AI personality that a race would have if they had a certain combination of ethics and traits. Now it is something that can be chosen if you meet the requirements, which is fanatic xenophobe. Let's pick that. And... Militarist. So what does this do for us? Cannot engage in diplomacy. 
Xeno populations will always be purged and have no effect on tradition cost. We gain unity from purging Xenos. We may use the Armageddon Bombardment Stance. We have additional fire rate, army damage, and tradition cost from Xeno Slaves is minus 100%. So that's pretty crazy, you know, if, if you ever wanted to play the Imperium of Man, this really is it. You know, thinking about Warhammer 40k and all the different races in Warhammer 40k, I feel like they're probably all fanatic purifiers. I mean, there is some diplomacy going on, but for the most part, they're all at war. But that is neither here nor there. So what are some other choices we have here? We have mining guilds, for instance, that give you plus 10% mineral production. If we unselect these and go for materialist, we should see that we have... Yes, Technocracy gives us the plus one research alternative. Now, originally, if you were to select Materialism, that would give you different governments you could select. One of which would give you the additional research alternative, the uh, Technological Directorate, I guess. There's also stuff in here for increasing your energy output. I'm not sure where that is exactly, but of course that used to be a government trait. But now that's all essentially been replaced by Civics. Uh, here we go, efficient bureaucracy, plus two core sector systems. And then, of course, we have our, in the middle here, our authority, which basically determines how often you elect a new ruler. Democratic is, of course, every 10 years. Oligarchic is 40 to 50. Dictorial is a ruler for life. Then you have an election, and then imperial is a ruler for life, but you have an heir. And selecting some of these will, of course, affect the different civics you can pick. And, of course, what you pick here, I think, affects that. Oh, check this out. So you could do a democratic police state with Shadow Council. That is pretty thematic. Of course, you'd give up any sort of early game resource benefits to do something like that. But uh, this allows for some more subtlety, it seems like. Having a democratic police state, definitely something that you see in the real world. Or you could have a oligarchic police state, which is perhaps more classic, I suppose, dictatorial police state. But then, of course, you could forget all that. You can go for authoritarian, and then you can't even pick democratic. But, you know, you can still be a police state. So there's all kinds of interesting things you can do. I guess the last thing I'll call out here is the syncretic evolution, which lets you start the game with four additional population units, the other population being a subservient species. Now, I believe they're going to have bonus army damage and mineral production, which is pretty cool. I wonder if you're democratic, can you pick that? Yeah, because like, uh, if you're egalitarian. So I'm pretty sure that these, these aliens are enslaved. So I'm not sure how that interacts with egalitarian and democratic or anything like that. So if something like this here, monthly unity plus 30%, citizen population happiness plus 5%, inward perfection, must be some sort of pac pacifist. If we're xenophobe and pacifist, now that is a fun combination. Xenophobe and pa pacifist, we can take inward perfection. Cutthroat's policies for plus one influence gain. This one here, agrarian idyll, farms produce one additional unity. Now that is a new... One of the new mechanics, Unity, that I'm not too familiar with. Imperial Cult, minus 33% Edict Cost. Exalted Priesthood, Governing Ethics Attraction. So that changes how... Yeah, that's basically like your ethics divergence, I guess. Now population units will have a greater attraction to your governing ethics. In this case, Xenophobe and Pacifist. Citizen Service to increase your naval capacity. Now, if we look at our traits, I'm not sure much has changed here. We start off with two points. We can pick five traits, so we can go really well far into the negative to make some truly customized species. But as far as I know, everything here is pretty much remain the same. But there's the addition of these two traits here, Conservationist, which gives you consumer good cost minus 20%, and Wasteful, which gives you consumer good cost plus 20%. And that is all for this quick look at the new race creation in 1.5 Banks. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this system in the comments. And I hope to see you for my Stellaris Let's Play coming up soon. Have a great day.